Welcome everybody. My name is Charlie Will and I'm an Enterprise Sales Specialist here at Tech Data, specializing in HP Storage. And today I'm going to talk about one of the elements of our Rack and Roll Tour, specifically the EVA 4400. So the particular unit that we have here in the Rack and Roll Tour is a 2C, 1D, so two controllers, one drive array with 846 gig drives in it. So in this configuration, it would be the same as if you had purchased a starter kit. So the EVA, what is the EVA? The EVA, or the HP Storage Works Enterprise Virtual Array, is a high capacity, highly available, highly scalable, controller-based, shared storage device. Fiber channel architecture, fiber channel on the back end and on the front end. So the drives all hook up fiber channel internally, all the interfaces internally are fiber channel, as well as the external interfaces are fiber channel. Very, very high performance box. So the 30 second elevator pitch on the EVA 4400 is it's powerfully simple. So you have a enterprise class controller based array. So it has the enterprise availability features and the enterprise performance features, but extremely easy to configure, extremely easy to implement. So the way I have it currently configured is just the way the EVA would come out of the back box from the factory. So everything is powered up, everything is connected fiber channel through a switch and to a server here in the rack and roll tour. And that server is running command view EVA, which is the configuration and management utility for the EVA series. So I'm going to start that. It's all installed on the server. As you can see, it's a web-based utility, so you're not limited to run this from a server on the network. It can be you know, attached through a web interface on any other server as long as there's IP connectivity to it. So as we see, <clears throat> we have the EVA storage network here. And underneath that, we have a device that's listed with a cryptic number. That cryptic number is the factory worldwide ID that's assigned to the EVA, very similar to the, to the serial number. So as you can see, if we go ahead and highlight it, we get listed that it's an uninitialized storage system. So because it's uninitialized, it's an it's, it's a, it's a initial factory state. So the first step that we do in configuring an EVA is we initialize it. So it gives us a warning that all of our data will be destroyed if we initialize it. We name the device. So I'm going to call it test. We choose the number of disks for our initial disk group. The minimum is eight. And here we have eight configured. So we don't, there's no real configuration options. We do our protection levels and you know, how we want to do dates. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the defaults and click initialize. Again, we get a warning that this will be an operation that destroys all the data on it. Well, it's uninitialized. There's no data on it. So we're essentially destroying nothing. So that process is going to happen, being that this is a fairly small array. It shouldn't take too long. And our operation is successful, and we have our EVA, our EVA up and its name test. So that was the first step. We, that simply, from totally uninitialized state, now we're actually ready to present storage to servers. So our first step in doing that is actually to create vDisks. So I will go ahead and expand our test EVA. Click on the virtual disk folder, and over here we have virtual disk properties. So from here we can create a vDisk or a virtual disk. Um, we can choose the default name. We specify a size, and down here on this second screen we have our, our availability, our, our capacity, available capacity with the various protection levels. So we have uh, 
818 gigabytes available at V-RAID 0, so no protection. We have 409 gigabytes available in V-RAID 1, or total, total mirrored copies. And V-RAID 5, which is striped with parity, with distributed parity, we have 654 gigabytes available. So the EVA being a virtual device, that's the pool of available storage based on the total number of disk drives in the array. If we went ahead and added disks at this point to the EVA, we would see those capacities expand. So we're going to do a relatively small 10 gigabyte volume just to be easy. We can also set our cache preferences as well here, but we're going to choose the defaults. Click on Create VDisk. We have the option to create more if we want to, but we're going to go ahead and leave it at one. And if you noticed, there's a small triangle with an explanation point there. That means that the process is actually happening to create that VDisk. So right now, it's not in a usable state until the controllers are actually finished creating it. We can, however, present hosts at this point. So we have a VDisk, we have storage allocated you know, for use by servers on the EVA at this point. However, we need to tell what store or what servers have access to that. All right, that's called selective presentation. Some storage arrays actually, once a VDisk is created or once a, a, a disk is created, they're presented to every, every server that's available on the fiber channel network. Um, the EVA does it opposite of that for security reasons and you know, functional reason, reasons to where you have to s specify an individual server. So the first thing we need to do is create a host. Remember, this is a brand new installation. So we'll go down here under our test EVA to the hosts um, file folder and we can add a host. So we want to add the DL380 here. So we'll call it, quite simply, DL380. We have to choose the worldwide ID of one of the fiber channel adapters that's in the server. So if you notice, we have a drop-down list here, and it contains worldwide IDs. Um, the way to match those up, granted, in our, in our system here, it's quite easy because we only have one server with two fiber channel host bus adapters, so we only have two worldwide IDs. But in most cases, there will be a long list of that since it is every one that's available on the, on the fiber channel network. So how we find that out is we use a tool that's provided by the HPA manufacturer. Uh, QLogic has one as well as Emulex. In this server, we happen to have Emulex HBAs. So we bring up HBA or HB Anywhere. So in this utility, on any server on the network, HB Anywhere will bring up a list of all those servers and all the HBAs with their associated uh, worldwide IDs here in this window. So we can see our, dot, our top DL380 is here and it's got two HBAs in it and we have the worldwide IDs listed here. So there's two of them and uh, we'll worry mainly about the last four digits. Um, one is uh, 6452 and the other one is 63E. E3 being the last four digits. So we'll first do 6452. So we'll go to our list of the worldwide IDs. We find 6452 and we can now associate it with the DL380. Of course it's a, a Windows box and we'll click add host. And under our host folder, we had the DL380. Now, in that operation, we had the option of adding one fiber channel adapter. So there's two in there. We need to associate the other fiber channel adapter with that particular host. 
So what we do is we go over here to the ports tab and we see our one port that we added, 6452. We go ahead up here to add port. We can select from the list and again in a normal situation we probably have a long list of IDs and we remember from our HB Anywhere that our other host bus adapters was uh, 63E3. So we see that in the list. We select it, add the port, and now both our HBAs are associated with that host. Then we'll go back to the VDisk, click on the Presentation tab, click on the Present button, and we see our list of hosts. Simply choose DL380 and Present VDisk. And we now have storage presented to a host from a brand new EVA that we unpacked, racked, and powered up less than 10 minutes ago. So it's very easy, very easy to provision, very easy to do. There's also other functions as well, again, that make this an enterprise class device. One of them is the ability to do snapshots. A snapshot is an instantaneous point-in-time copy of that particular volume. Now, if we were doing traditional storage, if we wanted to do a, a copy, an instantaneous copy, we would have to go ahead and actually move all those bits that are associated with that disk to another area on the disk, and that takes time. With a snapshot, all we're actually doing are making a copy of the pointers. That takes milliseconds. All we have to do to accomplish that is under the V-disk, go ahead and create a snapshot. We can choose the default name and properties. And now we have an instantaneous point in time copy listed for that V disk. And we can present that to a host. If we go over to the presentation tab, present it, bring up our list of hosts, present v, v disk. And it doesn't have to be the same server in this particular environment, we just happen to have a single server or a single host in our list, but that could be presented to any other server in the fiber channel network. The same with a, with a cluster. If you're in a cluster environment, you're not limited to presenting the virtual disks to a single server. You could have chosen multiple servers and presented to all of them. You know, in a VMware environment or a, a clustered environment, you know, that, that could be very handy. So in closing, I hope this demonstrates the, the powerfully simple EVA being how quickly, how few mouse clicks and how few operations it takes to actually set up and present storage and be up and going with an enterprise virtual array. Again, powerfully simple. Enterprise array, enterprise features, enterprise scalability, availability, and um, ease of use that's normally associated with business class storage. Some of the other operations as well of being able to remove a snapshot can be cumbersome in standard storage. With here on the EVA, all we have to do is hit delete. Again, we get a warning saying that all of our data on that snapshot is going to be destroyed, but that easy. Just a few mouse clicks and the operation is done.